More than 10 years and 1 billion U.S. dollars is what we know about NASA's mobile launch tower. Do you think that with such a long time and large amount of money, their launch tower would be amazing? But sadly, this billion-dollar equipment is not stable at all. It's not even comparable to one-tenth of SpaceX's $100 million launch towers. That's why what SpaceX just did with the new Starship launch tower totally humiliated NASA. So what exactly did SpaceX do with Starship's launch towers? What reasons are forcing NASA to acknowledge that SpaceX's launch tower is much better than theirs? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Perhaps many of us are still sunk about the impressive moments that the Starship IFT-3 flight created. Not only did it make new strides, this flight created a strong unlock for the entire Starship project. To continue with ambitious plans such as the moon landing and Mars missions, SpaceX will need to prepare for a multitude of Starship launches even more densely packed than we imagine. And they are continuing to intensify their efforts. On the production side, we can see SpaceX rushing to complete the construction of the Star Factory at the production site. This factory model is based on Tesla's Car Factory. With this system, SpaceX will begin switching to Starship mass production mode to be ready for every mission. But after production is complete, how can SpaceX launch a large number of Starships? Well, the most crucial thing they need to do is ensure their rocket launch towers. As a prominent rocket company in the United States, SpaceX is not only famous for producing and launching a series of reusable rockets, but they're also renowned as a private company with ownership of the most unique rocket launch towers. The first thing we cannot overlook when mentioning SpaceX is the world's largest Starship launch tower in Texas, affectionately known as Mechazilla by Elon Musk. Not to mention its function, but its scale and design are truly exclusive, completely different from traditional launch pads around the world. As for function, no question about it. Mechazilla is said to become one of the machines of the future that will bring a spectacle only seen in sci-fi movies, catching boosters and starships in midair. Currently, SpaceX is using a single starship launch tower at Starace. After undergoing three launches, SpaceX has learned quite a few lessons regarding this infrastructure, and I can say that it's been fairly stable during the two most recent Starship flights, at least not requiring extensive repairs from SpaceX. This also somewhat facilitates SpaceX's second Starship launch tower project. Recently, we can see the second tower being actively constructed. There are many arrays of wick drains that had been carefully buried by SpaceX workers in the ground. This action aims to facilitate water drainage and strengthen the ground for easier installation of subsequent components. Thus, we may soon witness the beginning of the second orbital tank farm. Segments of the launch tower have been assembled at Sanchez. Construction of the eighth segment of the tower began here in Feb. This segment now appears to be nearing completion, and engineers seem to have progressed, starting work on the ninth segment in the top of the tower. This section will house the pulley system and various mechanical parts necessary for Mechazilla's arm. Still, some segments remain in Florida and have not yet been transferred to Starbase. It's predicted that it won't be long before all segments are gathered and assembled, awaiting the opportune moment for stacking. Regarding the construction process, work is expected to take place quickly. With the first launch system, SpaceX took more than 13 months to complete construction, but with gained experience, the construction of the new launch tower can be completed much faster, even in half the time compared to the previous one. If SpaceX starts construction soon, perhaps the new launch system could be ready to go into operation around late next year or early 2025. Besides Starbase Texas, SpaceX also has another Starship launch tower in Florida, shocking NASA more than ever. This launch tower is being built near the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch towers at Pat LC-39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The construction of this launch tower was originally started at the end of 2019. However, after a year, construction was delayed as SpaceX wanted to create a new design with a rocket and launch system. It wasn't until the end of 2021 that the new construction process was restarted. The construction of this launch tower still faces many issues, mainly from NASA, as the agency's concerned that the Starship could impact other vehicles there, especially Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragonflight serving many of NASA's important missions like the ISS mission. However, SpaceX has still made remarkable progress. In just over a year, SpaceX has completed improvements in construction of the foundation, conversion and construction of important systems such as cryogenic fuel storage systems, water pipe systems, and most importantly, the launch tower stacking process. In addition to the launch tower, the orbital launch pad is also being constructed with a water deluge system installed underneath. By the end of 2022, SpaceX engineers designed the structure of Mechazilla's arm similar to the structure at Starbase, Texas. 
By early 2023, these arms had been installed on the launch tower. But in recent days, the significant changes to the Starship launch tower in Florida have surprised us. SpaceX once again began work on the launch pad across the Gulf of Mexico at the Kennedy Space Center LC-39A. However, SpaceX has apparently completely removed four of the orbital launch mount legs, hinting at a potential major redesign of the launch pad. We'll need to wait and see exactly what's happening here. Nevertheless, it's encouraging that work on the Starship launch pad at LC-39A is resumed, even if it means dismantling the pad for the second time before rebuilding it the third time this week. Not only that, to the southwest of SpaceX's Launch Complex 40, a new crew access tower has emerged for Dragon cargo missions. It's the key to relieving the bottleneck at Pad 39A, which is currently the only pad equipped for Dragon launches. This is one of SpaceX's latest projects, not only facilitating launch schedules, but also alleviating NASA's concerns. So, how have SpaceX's launch towers humiliated NASA? First, SpaceX is capable of constructing Mechazilla within a relatively short time frame, around six months at the Starbase facility, and potentially even having this time when building a launch tower in Florida. Meanwhile, a tower constructed by NASA takes two years to build initially, and essentially eight years for modifications. At this rate, SpaceX has completely humiliated NASA. In terms of cost, SpaceX's metal launch tower segment is relatively affordable. Standing over 145 meters tall and equipped with robotic arms and the power to operate them, each tower costs approximately $100 million. In contrast, NASA's launch towers are considerably more expensive. NASA's mobile launcher, for instance, comes with a hefty price tag of up to $1 billion. $1 billion in a decade! Too much expectation, and all we got was an overwhelming disappointment. It's also the launch tower used by NASA for the space launch system, which not only faced significant delays and cost overruns, but is considered a single-use structure, discarded after the initial rocket launch. Thanks to SpaceX's cost-efficient development approach without compromising quality, the expenditure for a Starship launch is around $2 million a mission. While this may sound substantial, it's a small fraction compared to the current average launch cost for NASA, which stands at $152 million per launch. In essence, if Elon's vision holds true, SpaceX could potentially achieve missions for cargo and humans at just 1.3% the cost NASA currently incurs for similar missions. Now NASA is working on a second mobile launcher to accommodate the larger Block 1B version of the SLS rocket. Bechtel won this contract to design and build the second larger mobile launcher for $383 million by March 2023. This would be about one-third the cost of the first mobile launcher in half the time. Past performance suggests this is unlikely. Bechtel was awarded the original contract to construct the ML-2 in 2019 for $383 million, with completion originally promised by spring 2023. Cost increases and design delays piled on through 2022, prompting NASA's Office of the Inspector General to audit the program. Its findings released last June showed the total projected cost was already expected to hit $960.1 million, or two and a half times what was originally planned. Delivery now is officially delayed until October of next year, but the audit suggests even that date won't be attainable. Once a launch system for many legendary rockets, a few years ago, Pad LC-39A rose as the secondary gateway to Mars for SpaceX's Starship. But now, everything's changed. With a surprising plan, SpaceX is gradually destroying the entire Starship launch support facility in Florida. So what happened? Why'd SpaceX destroy the Starship launch pad at LC-39A? In 2023, there was a period where we didn't see much activity or very little activity at the Starship launch site in Florida. During that time, many speculations arose, and most of us were confident with the scenario that SpaceX would surely return to complete this location after two to three Starship launches which would bring SpaceX closer to owning two launch sites on different coastlines. And yes, just as we predicted, SpaceX has indeed returned to work on the Starship launch site at Pad 39A. But the difference is that they're not continuing to build it, but rather destroying it. The demolition activities began a few weeks ago, and no one could have anticipated this. The legs of the OLM were systematically cut down one by one. By the end of March, there was only one leg left at the launch pad, and by the time you watch this video, even that remaining leg might have disappeared. So, why did SpaceX suddenly dismantle the OLM legs of the Starship at Pad 39A? Well, we can consider a few cases. First, it's possible that the OLM legs in Florida encountered issues due to prolonged disuse, prompting SpaceX to consider updating or just replacing them with newer structures. 
This could be similar to the situation at OLM in Texas, which seemed to suffer significant impacts after only a couple flights. Such issues wouldn't align with SpaceX's ambitious goals of frequent Starship launches. Additionally, SpaceX might be considering constructing an entirely different system, a launch mount combined with flame trench diverters, a configuration used in many previous rockets, or SpaceX could install a water deluge system similar to the one at Starbase for the launch tower. Both approaches have their advantages, so it would be great to see them implement one of these in Florida. Starting fresh would be better than working around existing constraints, which can be complicated. Whatever SpaceX decides to do, it'll become apparent in the coming months as Starship continues test flights beyond Starbase and moves closer to flight certification. Another possibility worth considering is relocating the existing systems at LC-39A, potentially including the launch tower, to another location in Florida. A potential relocation site could be SLC-37, currently used by ULA for Delta IV Heavy launches. However, it's worth noting that the Delta IV Heavy will cease operations after the NROL-70 mission. Perhaps the most intriguing and ambitious prospect is the possibility of relocating the entire launch system to Starbase, Texas. This move could be made to minimize any potential impact on Falcon rocket operations. If realized, this relocation could lead to the establishment of a third launch tower at Starbase, further solidifying SpaceX's commitment to developing Starship and Super Heavy with Mechazilla in the near future. But it must be said that regardless of what they do or for what purpose, Pad 39A is still a meaningful location for launching the Starship rocket. For those who don't know about this, the first Starship launch pad started in 2019 at Kennedy Space Center LC-39A pad, but SpaceX soon abandoned the effort and redirected its energy towards Starship prototyping in a much different launch pad design, forcing him to completely give up about a year of work at the end of 2020. At the end of 2021, Elon Musk returned to Florida. Only in 13 months, SpaceX has created foundations modified by one of Pad 39A's giant spherical tanks to store cryogenic methane, installed miles of plumbing, Built and assembled a second skyscraper-sized Starship launch tower, installed the legs of PAD's orbital launch mount, or OLM, installed a water deluge system at the base of OLM, assembled most of the OLM's donut-like mount off-site, constructed a new supersized storage tank, and delivered a forest of smaller storage tanks. Elon Musk didn't explicitly state his reasons, but the most significant one could be the FAA's restriction on SpaceX conducting regular launches from Boca Chica. And in their application to the FAA, SpaceX requested permission for 25 orbital launches per year, but the FAA only approved five orbital launches. At first glance, this seems insane. However, in reality, SpaceX plans to conduct more orbital test launches than we might think, and once they can establish orbits, it's all about perfecting increasingly complex landing systems and things like heat shield tiles requiring orbital testing. So five orbital launches are certainly too few for the future development of SpaceX's Starship. 39A is hallowed spaceflight ground, no place more deserving of a Starship launch pad. We'll have similar but improved ground systems in tower to Starbase, Musk shared another reason. The complex was previously used to launch Saturn V rockets for Apollo missions, as well as space shuttle missions. SpaceX's missions from the pad have also honored its history, with numerous flagship payload missions, the opening launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, and most importantly, enabling the return to U.S. domestic crew launches after the final shuttle launch from 39A, STS-135. It even hosted the first private mission to orbit, the launch of Inspiration-4. However, after all, the Starship launch pad at Launch Pad 39A, if it were to become operational, would also not be exempt from limitations. Starship and Super Heavy are both far too large to be transported between sites by conventional means. This leaves two possibilities. The obvious one is that a second Starship manufacturing site will be established at the Cape, but it's not that simple. The enormous size of these machines means that they'd have to build the factory close to the launch pad, and that'd be difficult. Laying close to the site likely belongs to NASA, and that would make building a huge array of tents and high bays problematic. However, with NASA buying launch capability for the Artemis program, it's not completely outside the realm of possibility. Next, a less obvious answer would be one that SpaceX has discussed before in the context of offshore floating launch pads. The idea would be to build the Starships and Super Heavy at Boca Chica and to simply launch them on a suborbital hop and land them at the desired base of operations. In this scenario, there'd be no need for manufacturing in Florida. Another limitation when Starship launches at Pad 39A is that Starship's schedule may be congested due to Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy rocket launches, which of course happens when Starship is not yet capable enough to meet numerous regular missions and crewed missions. Following this limitation is NASA's concern. 
Although SpaceX has built an additional Crew Dragon launch tower at LC-40, it will not be permitted to launch crewed missions until late 2023 or early 2024 at the earliest. Although launching at the 39A complex still faces many constraints, I firmly believe that SpaceX still has a strong desire to launch Starship in Florida. Rocket activity at Cape is reaching its peak. The Space Coast hosted a record-breaking 72 orbital launches last year, and clearly the pace also will accelerate this year and next. This is what SpaceX aims to apply to Starship before it can confidently launch anywhere on Earth. It must complete dozens, even hundreds of orbital launches beforehand. SpaceX will strive to transform Starship into a flexible and powerful platform capable of facilitating a range of missions, from cargo and crew transport to the International Space Station to the enabling of establishing sustainable human settlements. Elon Musk has revealed details about the next mission of Starship, a crucial milestone in SpaceX's comprehensive Mars colonization plan. This mission, planned for the latter half of this decade, aims to send an unmanned Starship to the surface of Mars, where it'll conduct a series of groundbreaking experiments and pave the way for human exploration in the future. He's outlined a long-term strategy involving gradually establishing a sustainable human presence on the Red Planet, enabled by Starship's flexible and reusable design. The plan envisages a series of subsequent missions, each built upon the success of previous ones, progressively expanding the infrastructure and resources necessary. Understanding such far-reaching visions, currently SpaceX is currently tirelessly working to increase the expansion of its production and launch facilities for Starship. Every action taken by SpaceX is carefully calculated towards the benefit of this colossal rocket. Let's see what they'll change the world with next. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.